I, I just want to say thank you to the Sunday School team. So let's give them a round of applause, please. Good job, guys. Welcome to St. Giles Presbyterian Church. We are a caring community of faith in the heart of the Glebe. And before I start, I just want to say, go Euler. I don't know whether the whole Canada's with Euler, but I'm certainly praying for them. We have a number of uh, first this time. Uh, well, we, we have a guest speaker. Will Burr is with us. Will, would you stand? And Will is a seminary student at Vancouver School of Theology. Uh, he's doing a, uh, a internship term at Knox Presbyterian Church uh, that uh, I believe is a, is a church you grew up in? Yes. Yes. So, uh, it's, it's good that you're able to come and, and share a message with us. Um, our scripture reader today, uh, it's also special. Uh, Amanda Curry uh, will be reading the scripture. Uh, so Amanda and Nick is with us. Uh, Amanda is uh, a minister out in uh, Saskatoon, uh, Regina. I am so sorry, Regina. Um, and uh, of course, uh, uh, no stranger to the congregation. Uh, she grew up here uh, and, and daughter of uh, Jing and, and Stan Curry. Um, so, uh, well, just also looking ahead, uh, we are anticipating, uh, expecting our summer service uh, join summer service to begin. And so this is a tradition uh, among a, a, a few congregation here in the Glebe area that in the summertime, we, we have joint services. So the schedule is uh, in the bulletin. You can see that at the back. Uh, I just want to note that starting July 7th, so that's the first joint summer service, uh, the, all the summer service time begins at 10 o'clock. So instead of our 10.30 worship, uh, is 10 o'clock, that's when, when we begin. Um, and I also like to acknowledge that the land on which we gather and worship is the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe people. The Algonquin people has been living here since time immemorial, and we are honored we can gather and worship uh, on this land. So good morning, everyone. Thank you for welcoming me. Please uh, join me in our call to worship. You can find uh, the responsive verses on um, your bulletin. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has given a gift to him to receive a gift in return? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let us sing hymn number 410, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You.
please be seated. And we'll now go into children's time. So I have a uh, book that I thought I would read to you all. Good morning, everyone. My name is Will. It's nice to be here with you all. And I guess I can just stand here, and hopefully you can all see the pictures. Um, do you think that's OK? Yeah? Um, so um, today, the reading that um, we'll be looking at in church is a story that you maybe some of you have heard. Um, it's, do you know when, when Jesus is out on a ship and there's a big storm. Have you heard that one? Yeah? And then Jesus stills the storm. So kind of what I'm talking about in church today is all about storms. Um, have you guys ever lived through a storm? Yes. Yes? <laughs> what was it like? <laughs> what, scary? Yeah. Well, this book, it was scary? Yeah. This book talks about a few different types of storms, because um, there's a few different types. So it's called In This, oh, sorry, it's called I Am the Storm. So let's see if we can all see it. All right. When the wind howled and blew loud as a train, we had a party in the basement with grandma reading books and playing games with the flashlight. You all see? So what kind of a storm was that, do you think? A tornado, yes. Do you guys know what a tornado is? Yes? Do you guys know? A bit young, <laughs> a bit young eh? yeah. <laughs> a big uh, cloud of, a big kind of wind storm, yeah. But they're having a good time, nevertheless, in the basement where they're safe. When the wind stopped whirling, as tornadoes always do, we picked up branches and fixed the fence. I danced round and round our front yard, howling and blowing like the wind. This is the next storm. When the ice and snow fell, sparkling like fairy dust on the windows, and all the lights went out, we made a fire and cooked hot dogs and ate marshmallows. So what kind of a storm is this? A snowstorm. And you've probably all seen these in Ottawa, right? Yeah. When the ice and snow stopped falling, as blizzards always do, we shoveled our walk and Mrs. Garcia's too. We built a snowman and I used up big handfuls of snow that fell down on my head. <laughs> when the fires burned in a forest nearby, Papa drove us to the lake. We camped and made new friends. I picked wildflowers and tied them into bouquets. I hope you can all see the, the pictures. Were you guys here last summer when there was a lot of smoke from wildfires? Yeah. Pretty intense. When the forests cooled as wildfires always do, I brought flowers to all the neighbors while the grown ups swept the ashes and washed windows. The air still felt hot as I swayed with my arms up like a slow, beautiful flame. We had big bowls of ice cream to cool down. What did you guys do during, the, during that smoky period? Do you stay inside, maybe? Yeah. We've got one more storm. When the sea swirled and roiled and rose almost into the sky, we drove away from the ocean to my cousin's house. We pretended the bunk beds were boats high above the waves. The storm was strong, and I was scared. What kind of a storm would this be, do you think? Maybe? A tsunami, or what's a big windstorm over the ocean? A hurricane, yeah, I think they're trying, to, it could be any of those, but I think they're talking about a hurricane, which we probably don't get in Ottawa, luckily. But, oh, sorry? So far. So, yeah, eek. 
But when the wind and sea calmed, as hurricanes always do, we went back home. That's that. That's that. That's the hurricane. It's okay to be scared. Nature is strong and powerful, but I am strong and powerful too. I am loud like the tornado. I am wild like the blizzard. I am hot like the fire. I am fierce like the hurricane. I am the storm. And when the storm passes, as it always does, I am the calm too. And then it's got information about the four types of storms. So, yeah, what, um, what do you think um, the story tells us? Not to be scared. Yeah. You're the storm. Yeah, what does that mean to you? It's, I, yeah, maybe we're strong. We're able to get through it. And the storm always passes as well. And in the story that in the Bible today, um, you know, Jesus stops the storm. So I think that thinking of that can help us to get through it as well. So, um, yeah, I, I hope you guys have a great time in Sunday school today. Thank you for listening to the story. It's really great to meet all of you. Yeah, have a wonderful day, and God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's keep going. All right. So, thank you for listening to that. Up next, we have a couple of prayers. So, I'm going to lead us in a prayer of adoration. Dear God, we thank you for the world, for the flowers, and the trees the cool breeze in the evening, the light of the dawn. Just a few months ago, it was so cold, now it is so hot, the world is full of change. Everything moves, nothing stays the same. We look to this world for signs of you, for signs of how you are dynamic. You are with us through the change. You help us find our way, you help us find our true nature, not as static objects, but as dynamic beings, dynamic bodies. You move through us and you move us. You are rushing water, gusty wind. You are the swiftly moving squirrel, the sparrow that flits from branch to branch, the dragonfly here one moment, there the next. You wrap us up in all that you are. You bring us from morning to afternoon to night. You come with us to appointments, to work, to play, to eat, and to sleep, and help us to laugh and delight in the small pleasures of the day. You also carry us through many storms. We thank you for the sunlight and the light inside of us. We thank you for this world and for your spirit in it. We thank you for a world that always surprises us. Amen. And now please join me in a unison prayer of confession. Um, it's in the bulletin. Dear loving God, we confess that we have not always found it in ourselves to live as we would like to live. We confess to you all that we are and all the ways that we are not able to be as loving or as peaceful or as wholehearted as we intended. We trust that you see all of us, all of our actions, even all of our thoughts, and that you hold all of that with gentleness. We are caught up in the rush of the world, the busyness of things, the deadlines and the shortness of time. We are overwhelmed. We lose track of what is most important, what is most lasting, what will still matter when dust settles, when temporary distractions have faded. We are in the midst of things and trust that you see a deeper reality and that you look on us with love. See all that we are, everything that goes unseen, unsaid, unnoticed, and with your love, hold all that is broken within us. Now please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us to say. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear these words assuring us of pardon from Psalm 28. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song I praise him. God knows all things and loves all things. No part of ourselves is unlovable. Know that God's pardon exceeds all that we can imagine, and that we are forever renewed in this moment and every moment that is to come. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We'll have a scripture reading. The first reading this morning is from Job 38, verses 1 to 11. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said, thus far shall you come and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. The second reading is the response of Psalm from Psalm 107 verses 1 to 3 and 23 to 32, and we will be singing refrain number one. Spring source of life eternal, drench our dryness, make us whole. Well, spring source of life eternal, drench our dryness, make us whole. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's, God's steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the mighty waters, they saw the deeds of the Lord, wondrous works in the deep. For God commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven, they went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their calamity. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at their wit's end. Then in their trouble, they cried to the Lord, who brought them out from their distress. The Lord made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad because they had quiet, and God brought them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for the Lord's steadfast love, for God's wonderful works to humankind. Let them extol the Lord in the congregation of the people 
and praise God in the assembly of the elders. Well, spring source of life eternal, drench our dryness, make us whole. And the gospel reading today is from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And waking up, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Be silent, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. Jesus said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now please rise as you're able for singing hymn number 728, The Storm is Strong. seated. I had a different tune in the book, but, uh, but, but it, was, uh, it was lovely. Um, and, and so um, we'll now arrive to the sermon. In the year 1900, when the British Empire was at its largest, Queen Victoria was returning on her yacht from a trip to Ireland, when she was disturbed by rough seas. Historian Barbara Tuckman describes the moment. After a particularly strong wave buffeted the ship, the queen summoned her doctor and said, go up at once and give my compliments to the admiral and tell him the thing must not occur again. But the waves would not stand still. The storm raged on, <laughs> despite the queen's wishes. The sea is a powerful metaphor for all that is beyond human control. 
In our reading from Mark today, the disciples are with Jesus on the boat when the storm arises and they fear that they will drown. And Jesus is very calmly asleep on a cushion, completely undisturbed. And eventually, of course, he calms the waves and the waves are still. He says, be silent and the wind stops. Storms, of course, are not just winds and waves. Storms are not only a problem for sailors. Storms are not only dangerous on a boat. Storms have many shapes and sizes. Storms arise in our lives. There are many things in our lives that might feel overwhelming, like they are too much. There are many types of waves that might feel like they are coming over the rim of the boat. Sometimes the most difficult times are the quiet ones, when everything seems calm, but there's a storm raging within us. I think that to be alive in this world is to face storms, many storms, storm after storm. Jesus says, be still, and the wind ceases. But storms don't do what we tell them to do. We cannot change things with a wave of our hand. We cannot reverse time or undo unfortunate things that have happened. Some things that are lost, some people who are lost, cannot be found again. But still, we have lived for years in this world of storms, and I think that we have become quite good at it. <laughs> We've been weathered. Each one of you, I'm sure, has lived through many. You have perhaps lost people that you love and faced many different types of storms. You might have challenges that I know nothing about, just as I have challenges as well. Let us be kind to one another, for most of us are fighting a hard battle said Ian McLaren, a minister of the Free Church of Scotland, although the quote is often attributed to different people. The whole quote goes like this. Most of us are acutely aware of our own struggles and we are preoccupied with our own problems. We sympathize with ourselves because we see our own difficulties so clearly. But let us be kind to one another. For most of us are fighting a hard battle. This is perhaps where we can find some relief from the storm or find Jesus in the midst of the storm, not necessarily in our difficulties going away like that, but in being able to, to live with them with more grace and ease and with them being not so much of a problem. We can see the storms that keep on raging and we can maybe let ourselves get wet a little bit and still know that everything will be okay. In the Bible, the sea is often a metaphor for God's power. Think of Noah or Jonah. In our Psalm 107 today, the Lord commanded and raised the stormy wind which lifted up the waves of the sea. He made the storm be still and the waves of the sea were hushed. Isaiah 43, 2, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. The sea is power that is beyond human control. In ancient times, Roman emperors were called masters of land and sea. And so for Mark to call Jesus the master of the sea is to contest the imperial power and to highlight things that are beyond human control. The force that drives the cosmos, the universe, the galaxies that created, for example, that solar eclipse that we witnessed uh, a little while ago is beyond human control, beyond human imagination even, perhaps. Beyond comprehension, for sure, I think. Dylan Thomas writes, the force that through the green fuse drives the flower, drives my green age, that blasts the roots of trees, is my destroyer. 
And I am dumb to tell the crooked rose, my youth is bent by the same wintry fever. To be alive in this world is to face storms. Jesus stills the storm, but is it not our nature to be on the boat, to be tossed by the waves, to be churned up, unsteady, sometimes unwell, sometimes unsure? We are fallible, imperfect, tired, sometimes hungry, sometimes alone, surrounded by storms, filled with storms. Jesus brings hope, conquers fear. We are weary and weak and prone to error. One of my more frequent, somewhat desperate prayers is to ask God, let me hear you. Let me hear what you are saying to me in this moment. And so often I feel like I cannot. I think it's a common prayer for many people. Speak to me, God. Let me hear you. I don't know what to do. Why is it so hard to hear God sometimes? Why is it hard to cut through the static? But then I realize that, I have, that I'm making myself feel guilty for not being able to hear God. And I'm thinking that if only I prayed a little bit harder, then I would hear God. Then I thought maybe we are not meant to hear Jesus, God, like that all the time. Maybe we are not meant to hear Jesus in the way that I can hear the birds outside right now, or I can hear my own voice coming through this microphone. At least not all the time. Clarity from God is somewhat rare. And certainly I can't demand God to show up in the way that I want him to show up right now. How can I, when I am human, hear God? How can I, when I am mortal, hear the immortal? How can I, when I am unsure, hear such certainty? I know that God is here because I have felt it in my heart at times. But a storm, I think, is that moment when you don't feel it. And there are such times. It's almost like we are in parallel universes, God and me. God is in God's world, I am in mine. God is perhaps in heaven, I am on earth. God is in color, I am in black and white. And yet, there's also something liberating about that thought because it's no longer up to me to free myself from whatever storm I'm in. Because I was never meant to be able to. My human mind and human heart cannot reach Jesus, cannot hear Jesus, cannot feel Jesus. But Jesus reaches, hears, and feels me. Furthermore, I think that Jesus even has faith for me. American priest Richard Rohr says, many scholars have pointed out that what is often translated in Paul's letters as faith in Christ would be more accurately translated as the faith of Christ. It's more than a change of prepositions, Rohr writes. It means we are all participating with varying degrees of resistance and consent in the faith journey that Jesus has already walked. For example, in Romans 3, Paul writes, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through the faith of Jesus Christ for all who believe. We might think that we have faith in God, but God also has faith in us. Jesus is there with us in the middle of the storm, 
even if the storm is not stopping. A quote from Alison Hill, who owns a hair salon in Toronto and took up running during the pandemic and then started a running club for black women of all levels and all body types. She was interviewed on CBC Radio a few weeks ago, uh, a week ago. I think one of the strongest things that running has taught me as an entrepreneur is that hard things are meant to be hard. And I think that if you can respect that, then you can move through life with grace. There are some runs that you go on, and they're supposed to be in zone two, which means that you're supposed to be able to talk and chit chat and have a great time as you're running. And then there are some runs that you go on that are supposed to be in zone four, and those are supposed to be challenging because you get those nuggets that get you to the next thing. So when I'm facing something hard in life, I have to ask myself, is this supposed to be hard? And if so, what do you need to, or if so, do what you need to do to get through it. <clears throat> God is many things. And for a runner who's struggling to put one foot in front of the other when her mind is saying, stop, this is too much, perhaps God is perseverance, God is endurance and resilience. God is the quieter of our storms. God is relief. God is a sliver of hope. God is the steadiness of Jesus in the face of the disciples' despair. And God is the stilling of the waters. But God is also there while the storm is raging. When we don't feel his presence, don't see God or hear God. God hears us in distress, even as distress continues. Christ has faith even when we don't. Jesus prays. Jesus prays for us, even when we are not able to. The writer of Ephesians says, for by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Alison Hill talks about how running is not just a physical thing. She says it is a physical thing, but it's a much harder physical thing when your mind is not in check. Any runner will know that. To move our body is also to engage our mind. And the mind, of course, becomes a storm. The mind says, this is hard. I can't go on. But when our mind is in line with our body, the world feels bigger. We are part of something bigger, beyond our own body. We are part of everything. We are not just a solitary runner with our own storm raging inside of us, but part of a community, like the community of runners that Allison Hill started. We share our journey with others, and our fight to finish a run becomes not just a matter of dragging our body across the finish, not just a solitary, isolated thing, but it's something that we share. We share the path, and it's a path that has meaning, and we realize that we are able to do something that is hard. It shows that to get through a difficult run is something that we can do, 
and after we can congratulate ourselves and each other for making it through. We can see the hard things that each one of us does, simply living in this world. We can recognize one another and one another's success and see beyond ourselves and our own personal storms. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we may walk in them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please um, join me for some prayers of the people, and I will leave a moment of silence for our own prayers. Dear loving God, we pray for each member of this community. Be with each one of us. Be with us deeply. May we feel Jesus by our side in whatever form he might take and trust that he knows best how to comfort that he will be a loved one, a friend, a kind stranger, a beloved pet, when we need him. We extend our hand to his and feel his presence. We listen and we hear his words. We walk and we know he's beside us. We talk and we feel his response, even if we do not always make out the words. We trust that kind words are nevertheless there. And if we don't see him, we trust that he is still there, that his eyes are always gentle. Comfort those among us who need comfort. Heal the sick, give rest to the exhausted, bring friendship to the lonely, bring activity to the lost, bring your eyes and ears to us that we might be there for each other. Help the larger community. May all people have homes and housing and support networks, family, friends, love, kindness. Many people need more support than they receive. Help open a door for that help to flow. Bring awareness to all citizens that different ways of being will benefit us all. Our city has a future that you can see for it. Help the city to see it as well. Help moments of possibility become real. Open people's hearts. Our larger earth needs deep change and renewal. Help people to be wise, help people to see possibilities for change, for a reversal of climate change, an end to wars, an end to corruption, bring deep changes to people's hearts, heal cycles of violence in countries such as Israel and Palestine, Myanmar, Congo. Above all, help the world to work together let all people see beyond themselves to the larger world, the planet, the community of all people. Let, let resources be shared. Let love be the motivator of countries, economies. Help trust to grow between people. Help governments to do good work and deserve people's trust. Put an end to corruption. Allow the people who are doing good in so many different small ways, helping our world to flow from one moment to the next. Civil servants, grocery shop workers, construction workers, hospital workers, nurses, doctors, drivers, retailers, all of the different work that people do around the world each day to allow us to have food to eat and clothes to wear and buildings to live in. Let people feel valued for their work. 
And now in this time, I invite any silent prayers that are on your heart. We offer all these prayers to you, Lord, who can do more than we can ask or imagine. Thank you for your wonderful ways of being. Thank you for the surprises that we do not know await us. Thank you for your love, for your investment in our world, and for all the beauty that is within it. All the colors of nature that are opened up during this time of early summer. Thank you for quietly keeping the world in motion and sustaining us all, and for guarding and healing our spirits. May we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us sing hymn number 744, Will Your Anchor Hold?
Thank you, Will, for sharing the message with us. And in this time of passing of the peace, and we'll do so, this is becoming more of a St. Giles tradition than anywhere else I've seen, is we will acknowledge every one of you, every single person who are joining from teleconference, from Zoom, and also in person. So first, let me acknowledge those who are joining from teleconference. I acknowledge you, Jean, and good to hear from you. Good. Okay. Oh, we'll talk, yes. Um, good to hear from both of you. Uh, let me acknowledge those who are joining uh, from Zoom. I see Bill. Hi, Bill. Hi. And uh, Christine, yeah, is that, uh, that's Will's mother, I believe. Good that you can join us. Oh. Uh, let me acknowledge those who are here in person. Uh, of course, Will uh, sharing a message with us. Um, and also Katie, our vocalist uh, and Heather, our music director. Thank you for serving the congregation. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge Bob Harper, Chrissy, and you brought a friend. Stephanie, Stephanie welcome. Uh, Nelson, uh, Pauline, Kamasava. Excellent. Um, uh, Nick and Amanda, our scripture reader today, thank you. Jean, I see Bonaventure. Uh, and I see uh, Etty and um, Renee. <laughs> Sorry, Renee. Um, Isaac. I see Megan and our duty elder Stan standing at the back. And we have uh, new friends with us today. Uh, I see. Well, welcome. Hi, Shane. Hi, Chris. Uh, our uh, technical support at the back is Stu. Thank you. I see Judy, Alice, and I see Don, Kay, I see Kathy. Uh, I, I think that's Robert, your Will's father. Excellent. And Nora. Peace of the Lord be with each and every one of you. And with you. A warm welcome to everyone. Uh, I'm glad to see you. Uh, a good number of people here this morning in person, despite the rain that we've had. Uh, uh, it seems that we've gone from summer weather to, to spring weather. It's uh, a very strange weather patterns we're having, uh, uh, but it's uh, not a disaster, and I'm glad you, you made it out this morning. And uh, I would like to start, uh, I think, with a, uh, a welcome to anyone who hasn't been to St. Giles before. We're happy to have you with us. Uh, and uh, please stay after the service. Uh, we do have uh, uh, coffee time downstairs in the lower hall. So uh, you're welcome to come and join in that, which I think uh, is a good chance for a chance to get to meet people and, uh, and uh, have a coffee or tea or juice or whatever it is that uh, you like, and it may be a little bit of food. Uh, 
the, uh, the teleconference uh, coffee chat on Mondays. Uh, this will be the last uh, Monday, I believe, be before we're in into the summer. And so uh, the instructions, if you haven't got them, are at the bottom of the page uh, where the announcements are. Uh, there's just two things of note happening this week. Uh, one is a session meeting on Tuesday evening. The elders take note. And uh, uh, the Alpha course uh, will, I believe it's the last uh, uh, session of the Alpha course on Wednesday evening. And, uh, and uh, just note that uh, the choir is meeting because uh, uh, you will note the summer schedule, which is in the, in the bulletin. Uh, we're sharing once again with uh, uh, two United Churches, and so uh, in the schedule, St. Giles uh, will post the service on July the 7th, and then again on August the 11th. But every one of these services uh, uh, are our services, even though they may be in one of the other churches. Uh, and so I'd encourage you, even in those weeks when St. Giles is, is closed, uh, uh, you can go to the other church that's designated in that uh, calendar. And uh, uh, the other thing I'll just note is that uh, uh, in June every year, uh, the Presbyterian women uh, uh, indicate a couple of things that they want to uh, donate to in terms of missions. Uh, and they're written there in, in the bulletin. So if you didn't get a chance, uh, because they had, a, they had an in-person meeting, uh, and uh, so not everyone got to it, but if you want to make a donation to that, uh, please do. And uh, you, know, you can indicate uh, what you're, you're uh, donating to, uh, the Presbyterian Women's Association's missions. Uh, and I know that, uh, that uh, a lot of things uh, that go on in the church uh, are really not very visible to people in congregations, but uh, uh, the mission moment on the back, I, I won't go into it, but you can read it yourself. Uh, uh, if you don't get to the back of the bulletin every week, uh, you, you miss some of the mission things. Uh, so I encourage you to read that. Uh, uh, and. Uh, so uh, the other thing is uh, that uh, it's always a good idea to take, take this home with you because uh, you may want to, to uh, take note of, of something that's going on or you might want, just want to read it again but you didn't get a chance to read it fully this morning. Uh, and you'll note that there's uh, a little paragraph about our, our guest uh, uh, preacher this morning uh, and, uh, uh, and we're happy that he's... Uh, you know, uh, taking the chance to come and, and uh, do something with us, but it's a treat for us as well. So uh, it's all important, and we, we need uh, good ministers. So uh, we could play our role as a congregation, as, as welcoming them who are practicing and until they, they eventually get uh, uh, to be fully qualified, and uh, that takes a while, but... Uh, uh, there are not a lot of people who, who are necessarily uh, signing up for that, but those that do need all the encouragement that they can get. And so uh, I'm assuming that uh, Will will be downstairs after the service uh, so you can have a chance to, to say something, greet him, and so. Uh, so with that, I think uh, that's all for now. and. Uh, and again, uh, for those who are visitors, if you've got any questions, uh, just ask me or ask someone else and uh, they'll explain things to you. And, uh, and uh, we did appreciate uh, Will's sermon this morning and, uh, and my daughter, Amanda, reading the scripture. And I want finally to say uh, a real treat was the prelude that I hope most of you were here for. Uh, with the S Sunday school children doing a musical presentation. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and feel free to, to say thank you to them downstairs. Cause, uh, thank you.
we're going to take this time and ask the duty elder and, and uh, an usher to come and collect offering. Let us stand and sing the doxology. God of love, may these gifts offered today and those offered by other means be seen by you and also our commitment to your purpose of bringing goodness and peace to this world. May they be used wisely with good stewardship for your kingdom's purpose. To you be all honor and glory in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us sing hymn number 569, O oh Jesus, I Have Promised.
And now, as you go forth, may you be protected from inclement weather and difficult circumstances. May you be held up and strengthened during the trials that life presents. And even when you feel swept away by its tides, may you know that Christ holds you firm and prays for you always. May you be uplifted by hope, grounded by love, and strengthened by courage in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.